Welcome to the Drawing Board. I'm your host and in-house artist Erin Leffler. If you joined me before here on the Drawing Board, big welcome back to you. And if it's your first time with me, hello and welcome. Now, before we get into the show, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what happens here so you know what we're going to do. Every episode of the Drawing Board, I invite a guest from around the entertainment industry, whether it be comics, movies, and more, and we learn a little bit more about them and what they do. And while we're learning about this, I'm also drawing them in real time. Pretty fun, right? Well, I am so excited to introduce y'all to my guest today because he has worked on so many things that I know a lot of you are big fans of, working with franchises like Star Wars, working with Marvel, doing movies like Secret Life of Pets 1 and 2 and The Grinch. He has done a lot of cool things and had a lot of hands in helping in some of our favorite things in pop culture. Please welcome my guest, David Accord. Hi there! Hi! How are you? Good, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I just mentioned a mouthful of stuff. So for my kids who may not be familiar with what you do, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and about your work? Sure, sure. So <clears throat> I'm Dave Acord, and I work at Skywalker Sound, which is a what we call a post-production sound facility. So when you've got, you're making movies, you've got sort of two uh, sections of that's how movies made. That production, when they're actually shooting the movie, um, the actors are on set, you know, for animation, that's when they're, they're drawing all the, the cells or animating the, you know, the, the characters. And then post production, if we take all those pieces that were created in production and put them all together in like a jigsaw puzzle and you know, make this scene, scene work with this scene, work with this scene, and we put sound in there, and music, and voiceover and all these things and that, that's sort of the final phase uh, of filming. I am a post-production sound person. So I make sound effects, mixing, um, I do a little voice work, um, and uh, sound design is kind of like a gig that I, I do, which is creating sound effects. Well, that is incredible. That sounds like a lot of work as well. I love hearing there's multifaceted jobs out there because I love getting to talk about and touching on those. It right. sounds like you've also had a hand in doing this for a while, because when we were talking before, we were talking about Star Wars, and that has mm -hmm. been a multi-year project. So for you, yeah. you don't have to carbon date yourself. I know some people are funny <laughs> with that, but how long have you been doing this job for? Um, you know, I actually started, going back to what I was saying, at the, uh, I started in production. My, my first seven years I was doing film work, I was in production. And then I moved into post-production, and I've been doing post for 20 years. So all in all, 27 years I've been in film. Yeah, That's amazing. <laughs> Longevity, I love that. I love jobs where you can have a good timeline in it. Because a lot of kids think that yeah. some jobs, in, especially in this industry, are just kind of shortcut. And with mm -hmm. some jobs, it is like in animation. You yeah. can go from job every two to three months. But it's nice to know there's also jobs out there that can last quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, and, and to, to kind of follow up on what you're saying, um, the film industry is like that. It is, uh, you, it's like building a house. Um, you, once uh, you're an architect, you build one house, and then, you know, once that job is done, you have to find the, the next homeowner that wants their house built, and that's sort of filmmaking, is you, you kind of go from one job to the next job to the next job, and there are moments in between where you're looking for the next job. And that's, uh, it's, um, you have these sort of <laughs> built-in vacations, sometimes whether you want them or not, in between gigs. To me, that's the fun part, just having a little bit of time on jobs. Awesome, I love that. So I have to ask, because you mentioned during production and post-production, two different types yeah. of jobs. When you were transitioning from production to post-production, was there a lot of change from that, or was that something else oh, kind yeah. of an easy switch over? No, that's uh, they're kind of it's kind of two different disciplines. Um, in, in sound is what I was doing in, in both production and post production. And, and, and production sound, um, you, it's you're required to what you're focusing on is recording the actor's dialogue on set. That's in, in live action. Um, that, that's that's the whole gig. Um, for me, I was a boom operator for the most part boom pole over my head with a microphone <laughs> on the end and following actors around. Um, switching into post-production, I'm, I'm sitting at a desk with a computer and a you know, mouse and keyboard and speakers and cutting in or, or inserting in sound effects 
um, over top of explosions, spaceships, or speeding up dialogue that was supported in first production, production and post production, you take that dialogue and you trim out like all the little bits you don't want that uh, so it can go to uh, the mix in a cleaner way. So they're very different disciplines one to the other. Some stuff translates, I guess, the general knowledge of how films are made is, is useful, um, or the, the workflow is, is, is good to know, but um, it's really good. That's really cool to know. I think, you know, it's kind of hard for us when we're sitting in a movie theater thinking like, oh, there's somebody behind this that has to go in afterwards and add those sounds and effects to it. Right. So it's kind of right. cool to, to hear about how this is done. So I would love to get to know a little bit about this. Um, what does what does a day on the job typically look like for you? Yeah. Okay. So um, if I'm doing sound design work, which is mostly what I'm doing, and that's kind of the beginning of the job and when it, when it lands in our uh, lap, uh, let's say it's a, it's a science fiction project, like, like, like Star Wars or maybe a Marvel project or something. Um, one of the first things you're going to want to do is what they have what they call a, a spotting set which is where you get together with the director, maybe a producer or two, and the picture editors, and you talk about um, the, the, the sound effects in the movie that you want to address. Maybe there's a new character in the movie that's gonna have a, a cool voice process, and you wanna talk about like, what that voice process is gonna be. Or there's a new spaceship, and the director has a particular idea. They want the spaceship to sound like a, you know, a race car, but but a but a spaceship. So something like that thing um, versus it sounding like it's that, it's like it sound a little radier. Um, that's sort of like a that was actually kind of the direction of when we started. We wanted the spaceship to sound like like race cars. Um, so you, that, that's kind of one of the first things you do is talk about what you want this stuff to sound like, and then you kind of dive in with your editors and. and uh, you know, you, you make effects, you select effects, and decide. Okay, this is this is this is going to sound like this. We want these sound effects for this, you know, creature, or these sound effects for this spaceship, or or whatever it is. And you have a team of editors that you're with to help realize that and cut those sound effects in in the movie um, for lasers or whatever it is. And uh, when you get to the mix, you have all these tracks of sound effects that you. Um, just talking about sound effects and everything, the whole other world of music and dialogue doing the same thing. And then the mixer, it's their job to kind of make sense of to say, okay, uh, you know, in this moment, we've got these laser guns firing. We really want to hear those. And we don't want to hear so much about that space. So turn the space down and make sure you take the Where the music's playing really big right now. Let's take all the sound effects and bring them out right now so we hear the music. All that sort of things with the mix of them. It's kind of heads or tails of all these sound effects. I love That's a really short, like, from Super Pet version of, of it <laughs> explained in, in two minutes. Um, but yeah, there's. I'm, I'm <laughs> no, that, that's super cool. And I think that's definitely a better explanation than I would know or that pretty much anyone who doesn't work in that field knows. So thank you so much for sharing that. Cause I think it gives kind sure. of like more of an insight to it. And you know, that's a, another possibility maybe that a kid didn't think of before that maybe they'd be interested in. Okay. So it's an interesting field to get into. It's not exactly one that you hear about all the time. I'm curious mm -hmm. how you ended up getting into this field because it's a bit of a strange path to take to get into any field in the entertainment industry. So I'd love yeah. to hear from you what made you want to get into this field? Well, you know, when I was a kid, um, I grew up in a small town in Delaware, and uh, there wasn't really a lot of uh, access to the film industry there. Um, they didn't know anybody, and, you know, it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't like a big town or anything. So it was everything I knew about the film industry back then, and this is back pre-internet, too, because I'm an older person um so there wasn't uh you wouldn't have a lot of like you know there wasn't a lot of info out there either to kind of figure it all out so you know my friends and i would just we had like a super eight camera and we would make big stop motion animated 
movies or we would write like little film scripts and you know just like anything we could do that we thought was you know filmmaking or in that vein and um anyway eventually we went to school and studied uh film theory and photography um, the school i was at didn't have a film and uh when i got out i just started i did everything i could to try and let friends the film time you know, sending resumes everywhere and all this. Anyway, um, the first gig I got was on a movie called 12 Months, directed by Gary Gillen, maybe four, I think. Um, and uh, I was in the art department on that. They needed an intern. And that's how most people get on film jobs. Like a, a low-paying or a non-paying assistant that's supposed to get like a short-term job that leads to a paying job eventually. Um, and then a few months on that, I landed a job in special effects, which, I, which was mostly cleanup type stuff since I was kind of new. And I met the sound guys on set. Thing. And now I've been a musician my whole life in one form or another. A great one, but I, I know music. I've done home recordings. I know the gear to an extent, and I would just talk the sound guys up on set, and we got to be friends. And they ended up hiring me um, on their next several jobs um, as uh, part of their sound team, and that's kind of how I got in. Um, and I guess I'd always kind of thought as a kid that I was going to be a writer. Producer or something. I, I, I and I, I tried my hand at writing, and I, uh, you know, I, I guess the takeaway there is to keep an open mind. Um, the main goal for me, when I think about it, was just I wanted to be a part of the film world. I wanted to be a part of an industry, and um, I found a niche there that uh, suited my actual skill set, and uh, eventually discovered that post production sound part of that skill set really spoke to me. So uh, I kind of stumbled, stumbled into it a bit, but um, I think it was part of my own you know, uh, personality or my own you know, talent you know, sound-wise that kind of led me there. And I happened to luckily thrive in the post-production sound environment. And, uh, uh, hopefully I can keep it going. I've got a few more left. Few left in. So, we'll see how it goes. That's amazing. And you actually brought up something that I love talking about. You brought up that you went to school and that you did mm. internships, which are mm. both learning experiences in a way. Do you yeah. think that those type of avenues of learning are necessary to get into this industry? Or can you kind of rely on skills that you already have? Um, you know, uh, internships, I think, are definitely necessary. I think that I think any time and if you are going to school, I think you should be doing internships while you're in school, especially um, in summertime or whenever, wherever you can make that happen. Because I think that that work experience is invaluable. And uh, school is great, too. You can learn a lot at school uh, and, and make a great network of, of friends and colleagues in school that are going to be your, you know, your work colleagues eventually, probably. Um, so I, I think the both important. Um, is it necessary to go to school? I, it's not entirely necessary, but, but depending on what you want to do, I think, and depending on what your innate talents are, um, you, you, that may or may not be your 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 choice to go to school. But it, it, either way, I would say an or a friend. Yeah. There's there's always such a varying degree of thoughts on that. I love hearing everybody's answers on that because there are so many different sides of that. Some people are mm -hmm. sworn that school is the only way to go to get into this mm -hmm. industry, and some people are like, no, you can break in another way. So it's nice for kids to see that there's kind of options all around the board that for it's sure. not always just one singular way. Absolutely. So I'm going to break into a little bit more fun questions because those are kind of more on the serious side. I love okay. getting to talk about this topic because a lot of times on the internet, kids are seeing that people are hustling 24-7 and all they're doing is work and there's nothing mm -hmm. fun to be done. But 
humans were very, we're very multifaceted creatures. We have many likes and dislikes. So that brings up the topic of hobbies. Do you think hobbies are good for us? And do they help us do better at our jobs? And do you have any hobbies? Oh, uh, yes. Hobbies, for sure. I think or any kind of pastime that isn't work. Um, for, for, for me, it, it's, it's you have to have a work uh, and real life balance I, I i think that that's that's key you don't want as, as what people you hear all the time about not taking work home with you and what that means is you don't want to let your work existence invade your private life and i think that that's super key and, and hobbies are a great way to sort of keep that balance in check um, hobbies are all about what you want to do something you do with your personal time um, that's uh, about enriching yourself um, and or just having fun, really. I mean, the games can be a hobby. Um, so, yeah, I think that, yeah, and anything you can do um, with, with, with friends or your family and your personal time, I, I think, you know, you, you got to make time for that. And, uh, um, so for me, uh, I mean, I I don't play as much music as I, as I, as I should or would like to, but I do have... <laughs> I have a few guitars and I have a couple of basses and I try and play those when I can. Um, uh, sports fan, so you know I try and watch like you know the NFL season starting soon. I'll I'll be watching a lot of that. Um, it, it, you know I, I just for me travel is a is a big um, hobby for me. I don't know if you can call that a hobby, but that is the um, my favorite thing that my wife and I go do is to travel. We try and get as much of that in as possible explore new places yeah that's um i think it's uh i think if you you have to let work be work and and, and like home life kind of be at least 51 percent of, of your existence i think you have to let that kind of um, take pressure. that is great advice and i love those hobbies as a football fan myself i <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely appreciate that. And you know what? Traveling is definitely a hobby. I tend to find during the pandemic, I miss traveling a lot more than I did before. So I yeah. think it's definitely a good hobby. For sure. Yeah, I miss it too. So again, more on the fun side, because I want to add some more fun stuff in here. Sure. As creatives, we have worked on a lot of fun, different projects with a lot of fun, different people that maybe we wanted to work with for a while. Are there any projects that you can think of or any one in particular that you've worked with that has been like an absolute highlight to your career that you just absolutely treasure? Wow. Okay. Um, let's see. There's been a few. Uh, I really enjoyed working on um, the first, uh, well, both Secret Life of Pets movies. Um, th th those are great fun. The Illumination folks that make those uh, movies are, are, are fantastic. Um, Chris, the director, is a great guy. They're, they're just a lot of fun. They're very uh, charming. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for sound. Um, there's always a great score that goes with them. Um, those are those are great fun. Too. But Star Wars is it's, it's hard to beat that. And for me, um, Clone Wars, uh, the Clone Wars animated series, which kind of ran from 2008, I think to 2013 or so, somewhere in there. Um, and then there was a final season just like a year ago that kind of came back around. Uh, that one uh, of, of Star Wars animation was actually my, my favorite thing I, I think I've ever done. Um, it was one of my, my first opportunities to, to uh, do sound design and to end a mix. Um, I'd done other little things here and there, but that was the first major thing I did for sound design and mix. Uh, Dave Filoni, I, I met Dave on that show, and Dave's uh, like a major creative uh, force um, I love the film in Star Wars. Uh, one of my best friends, Matthew Wood, he and I worked together on that. Um, it was just a great fun, it was a great time, it was a lot of work, but it was really fun to kind of dive into the Star Wars world create new sound effects um, to look at some of the original legacy sound effects that ben burt made uh, to get to kind of play with those um it, it was kind of like being a kid like being that kid making stop motion animated films you know when, when i was little with star wars action figures but it was kind of you know uh 
and getting paid to do it. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I miss it. Those are always the best jobs where they just feel like you're a kid again and not just doing a job because those are the ones that you always end up appreciating and doing the best yeah. I think on. For sure, for sure. So you mentioned Secret Life of Pets and we talked a bit about sound mixing before, but you also mentioned that you do a little bit of voice acting, which I think is mm -hmm. pretty neat. That's a really fun profession, I think, for people to get into. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? What, what, type, what type of work goes into that? So yeah, so it's for me. It started as doing um, some. I, I started to try and bridge that as a as a side um, sort of career that I was uh, many many years ago, and I did had minimal success at it. But when I was doing sound design, uh, when there would be a creature that needed a vocalization, a alien in a Star Wars bar or something. Um, uh, I would, it, the easiest thing for me to do was use my own voice and, and manipulate it and then, you know, create an alien voice. And then that sort of morphed into uh, doing more um, what we call loop group, which is background voices for, for movies. I, so I end up doing some loop group, I do alien voices, creature voices, that kind of thing. Um, it's a lot of fun. It kind of goes hand in hand with the sound design thing for me. Like in Secret Life of Pets 2, there's this evil monkey, Little little Surge, I think. And I, I asked Chris, the director, if I could take a crack at it. And he said, sure, give the shot. So I did my best uh, monkey impression. Um, <laughs> my voice is a little lower, so I had to pitch me up a little bit. But he loved it, and that's what's that's in the movies, me as a uh, monkey in Secret Life of Pets 2. And there's been other things I've ever do. Uh, a lot of Star Wars stuff, uh, some some Marvel things, but uh, that monkey and Secret Life of Pets I love. That is awesome. I love that. It's also kind of funny to find yourself voicing an animal and not not a person or an alien. You're just kind of like, yeah. oh, that's my voice coming out of that. That's a little weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all about like, for for those creatures. It's all about. Um, like emoting, it's uh, creating an emotion with your voice rather than literally saying how you feel or you know any kind of sentences. It's just you you kind of grunt and whine and cry what you're what you're feeling. Um, for for a monkey, is those emotions are very extreme. So uh, <laughs> that was kind of I can imagine that's probably very expressive in the recording booth as well because you kind of got to yeah. exaggerate it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, and and for animation too. It's uh, it's an animated monkey, so it's gonna you know, you got to go to eleven. You know, sometimes you got to like really ramp him up. Absolutely. <laughs> now you had mentioned your friend before, and you both have been working on sound mixing, and both of you have been nominated for awards and won together, which I think is amazing. Did you guys ever see that happening with the line of work that you do? And are awards everything when it comes to this line of work? Um, I no, I, I we've been nominated or individually we've been nominated um, for well for uh, for me a couple of Academy Awards, a pair of Academy Awards for Star Wars, uh, of course Awakens and Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, and Matt uh, Wood along with me on both of those, um, and then we have, we have uh, Emmy nominations. We won an Emmy uh, recently for Clone Wars. We won an Emmy last year for, for The Mandalorian. Um, and it's those are great fun. It's great fun to be recognized um, by your colleagues and, and by you know your, your other your peers in the industry for um, for taking notice of something that you've done, some contribution you've made to uh, to your show and to the to the industry. So that's it's awesome. Um, it, 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 how important are awards? I mean, it's, um, I don't know. I mean, how, I guess, you know, how important is a Super Bowl trophy to a football player? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's no, there's no denying it. it it's, it's always fun. To, you know, is, is it important to the job? Maybe not necessarily. Um, it, you don't go into the job. Uh, it's a funny thing about awards. You don't go into the to the job thinking you're going to get an award. Um, it, it's your the whole award thing happens after you've already finished the job, you know. So it's, it becomes this thing that you're uh, you kind of distance from. Um, so you're you're recognized for something after the fact. 
not like running a race in court. So it's uh it's different in that, in that, in that way. But yeah, it's it's absolutely great. I, it's you know it's, it's exciting. It's it's a fun thing to you know call your mom on the phone and say hey you know look what we did and uh, she uh, probably kind of understands what you do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I love that you mentioned that it's not really everything to the job, because I think a lot of people, especially within this industry, kind of go in with a competitive mindset saying like, oh, this yeah. is the be all end all. And that's how I'm going to get my name out there. But it's really not at the end of yeah. the day. It's just kind of like yeah. a cool thing. We're like, hey, look at what I did. Absolutely. It's a total honor. And, and I love it. And, it, and it's great. And it's it's a great way to even, you know, connect with your with your with your colleagues out there. Um, but for to the job itself to what you're doing i mean it's i guess there's no literal you know importance to it I don't well, know. on the lines of competition <laughs> there is a high spirit of competition in this industry not everyone is this way but a lot of people are highly competitive whether it be going up for jobs going up for awards you name it it can be a little challenging for kids who maybe don't have a competitive spirit like somebody who's an athlete do you think that it's important for kids to try to have a competitive spirit or do you think that they can learn how to work well with others, how to collaborate and have friendly competition with one another to help improve each other? Right. I think that that's what you just said there is key. I think it's about friendly competition. Um, I, I think that uh, the industry itself, just by nature, is, you know, well, like, like most industries is competitive where you've got, you know, multiple people or mo multiple um, companies trying to do or want, wanting to do the same job and only one's going to get picked. Um, and that's just, you know, that's work and that's kind of how it goes. Um, it doesn't mean if you don't get the job you wanted that you're not going to get another job. You know, there's going to be other things to do out there and the next time around, if there's a particular job that you want, maybe you will get it. Um, and it, being supportive of each other and being there for each other for your colleagues is, is very important um because this is uh you know this is your this is your work family you know these are your these are your, your work colleagues and you have to be able to support each other learn from each other and help each other grow because it's that's you know well that's just life you, it, that's the only way you're going to get better if somebody else is helping you as well so it, it goes both ways um uh, so, in the spirit of friendly competition, I think that that's that's probably the better way to approach it than any sort of, uh, I guess, uh, direct competition. Uh, <laughs> and th and that's kind of how we how we, we like to, to to try and try and work um, at the place I work at, a Skywalker. It, it's all sort of about a community and supporting each other and um, yeah, uh, having a, a, I guess a positive network. Absolutely. And kind of hand in hand with that, because there are a lot of talented people in this field and there is a com there's a big competition to get jobs. We may not always get the job that we want, which will end up getting a rejection letter every now and then, which is not always fun to get. Should kids take rejection as something they did personally or can they use it to help them grow in their craft and improve down the road? Right. I, it's rejection is tough because especially in um, in the art world, which is just, you know, what we're doing in film is art. What you're doing is art it, because you're putting so much of your personal self into your art. Um, it is hard not to take rejection. Personal rejection of something you know you put something personal into. However, it is a business. And, uh, it is work, and rejection is part of business. It doesn't mean what you did is. Or, or, or the time that's wasted. Um, because every time you, you, you do something, you can create something, you're getting better at that. Um, and if this particular person, uh, that wasn't what they were after, um, then what you did or what whatever um, thing you created, it may be something like that might be useful down the road for somebody else. Maybe that um, technique is going to be, you know, some other time and we'll use that. Kind of tuck that in the back of your mind, learn from it. And then next time around, you know, see if see if that's gonna uh, suit somebody else. Um, but yeah, rejection happens, and all you gotta do is just kind of brush it off, move on to the next thing. Um, in, in the case of if somebody's commissioning you to do something and they don't like what you do and you gotta redo it, you got you have to view that as a collaboration. 
that what you're doing is you're creating your art, but you're, it's a permission piece, so you have to collaborate um, with, with the director or the producer, whoever is um, asking you to do this work, because at the end of the day, this, you're making this for this person, so you want them to be happy too. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that's it's, it's going to happen. Objection's going to happen, and uh, like you said, you have to be able to, to uh, learn and grow from that. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful answer, and I think that's a good way to have an outlook at it. Because a lot of people take it as immediately, it's like, oh, it's something I did wrong. But in actuality, right. it's not always personal all the time. It's maybe no, just no, like no. somebody had a different vision, or they just needed somebody else's skill set. So awesome Absolutely. thing to keep in mind. Now, I'm sure within the 20 years you've been in this industry, you have seen so many changes come about. And one of the ones I love getting to talk about is we're seeing a lot of new faces and voices come into this industry, and it's well overdue that we're getting to see them, but there's still a long ways to go. Sure. Do you think that it's important for kids to see people who look like them, maybe come from the same places and countries they do, speak the same language, have the same background? Do you think it's important for them to see people like that doing the jobs they want to do? And should it stop them if they don't see somebody like them doing what they want to do? It is absolutely important that people see diversity uh, at work for uh, kids or for adults as well to see um uh, people in positions of, you know, at, at work where they want to be uh, that uh, they can relate to, you know, but that, or, or that uh, not just look like them, but maybe they come from the same background or whatever it is. It's important that uh, it's see diversity because it, it, it's, if you see uh, diversity in a field where you want to be in, I think that what you're seeing there are um, doors that have already been open that you you know you, you can access you know what i mean so yeah. i think i think if you are only seeing one kind of person in whatever industry you're going for uh and it's not and it's not a face that you recognize or you know familiar with you're not going to see uh an open door necessarily so um i i think it's, it's very important that and, and we do have a long way to go um, but I think that people uh, are getting there, I hope. Um, uh, it's, it's, only, uh, it's, only, it's going to take time, and uh, we're doing the best we can. Absolutely. I think that's a great thing, too, that you mentioned, that it can kind of help kickstart if you see somebody doing what you want to yeah. do. It kind of helps. Yes. Yeah. I thought that was a good answer. I, I, I kind of stumbled through that one. <laughs> no, no, it was, I think it was great. I, you know, sometimes I, I have that thing too where I'm like, did I say that the right way? And then it's like, it comes out sounding fine in the end. So it works. <laughs> <laughs> now, as creatives in any field, whether it be doing actual art, doing sound art, visual art, you name it, we mm -hmm. are all still dreamers. We kind of have that eternal child in us that wants to try and do as many new things as possible. You've gotten to have a hand in helping with a lot of amazing productions and yeah. franchises, but I'm sure there are still things or still people that you'd like to work with. Is there yeah. anything that you haven't done yet or haven't worked <sighs> with yet that you'd like to eventually? Um, you know, I'd really like to work on a Western. Um, they don't <laughs> <laughs> it's a little old fashioned, I guess, because they, I mean, they used to make a lot of westerns years ago in the 50s and 60s well pretty much since they've been making movies up through you know like the 60s and early 70s they had there was even like you know categories of awards at, at you know, westerns as their own category there were so many westerns being made but in the last you know 30 years or so it's kind of fallen off the map um you don't see a lot of westerns anymore and maybe it's just a childhood thing, you know, that I used to kind of love, you know, Western growing up. Uh, I, I, I would love it. And there's there's so many great, you know, cool things you can do with Western sound wise, you know, like horse and carriage and the old West town and, you know, gunfights and, you know, all these kind of cool things you can kind of do um, uh, with Westerns uh, that don't involve, you um, cars or spaceships or lasers or well though that could be kind of a cool one, I suppose. Um, but uh, I, I it's one thing I've never done that I would like to do. 
That is so fun. If there's anybody <laughs> who's looking for a sound mixer for a Western, now you know where to go. That's right. <laughs> Love it. So a couple more questions for you. These are some of my favorites because they kind of like, you know, teach like the really good lessons just in case a okay. kid hasn't been able to pull anything out from this yet, which uh -oh. I highly doubt, but... <laughs> A lot of us tend to make mistakes. We're human. We always have little goof ups and stuff. But thanks to how we see things on social media now, it's almost very hard to envision somebody making mistakes because I like to call it a highlight reel. We're only seeing the finished product of people's work. Are there any stories that you have from working on the job or outside the job where you had an idea in mind and it didn't exactly go to plan? Oh, you know, that happens almost every single movie. Um, <laughs> you, you, you have a, a particular, because what you're doing is um, in that sound design spotting process I was describing earlier is you're getting ideas from, from the director and uh, picture editors of what a particular scene or moment or whatever thing should sound like. And it is extremely difficult to describe how something sounds that doesn't exist this is the case in animation all the time where there's no sound going in animation there's no on set recording it's literally just you know, in it. um and so it, you get a sort of a variety of descriptions of a sound and they're not always you're not always on the same page with somebody when when they're trying to describe what sounds so yeah, there's been a, a number of, of, of failures, some some more some more epic than others about my attempts at creating something and just falling on my face, and you know, and that's part of it. And then you go, okay, um, well let's let's start over and you know, let's try this, and you eventually get there. Once in a while, you know, you'll knock something out of the park, you know, right off the bat, but that doesn't happen very often. Um, so yeah, there's a uh, there's quite a few few times that. Uh, uh, I gotta quite uh, nail things in the first, second, third, or eighth try. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So it sounds like that's not something that kids should be worried about if they make a mistake. It's okay to make them. Oh yeah, I think it's it's important to 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 not only make mistakes but to figure out what the mistake is and how to correct it, and then in the correction of that mistake and learning what you did wrong or, you know, or, or whatever it is, I, I, you become better at your job and you're better artist or whatever. You become better at that because you know now how not to make that mistake again. Or maybe something in that mistake was actually, you know, might be useful down the road. That it, it seemed wrong in that moment, but there was something about it that you might want to kind of tuck away to uh, you know, sometimes it's like you have these happy accidents where you, you make something that doesn't quite work, and then you say, okay, well that doesn't work for this, but maybe you know that technique or whatever I did might work down the road. So let's just kind of not throw that away, but set it aside, and then we might be able to use that later. Absolutely, happy accidents. That's a definite good way to look at it. I always think always grateful for Bob Ross for saying that because that's one I think that's the best way to look at it because there's a lot of times where it uh, actually does work out and we can use it later on and or learn a really good lesson from it so I love yes. that you mentioned that we, we can always learn from Bob Ross that's he's <laughs> in life in general <laughs> absolutely so along those lines there have been probably a lot of lessons you've learned over your career is there mm -hmm. anything in particular whether it be from us talking in this episode or any lesson that you've learned in general that you just want to impart to the kids ending this episode? Well, I, I think it's important to, uh, and not, not to be cliche, but it's important to not give up. I, I think that's probably the most important thing. Um, I, I, I think the, the, the one bit of advice that would have been you know, useful to me early on and uh, is, is that it's okay um, when when things don't go wrong early on. Uh, when things go wrong early on, things aren't quite going the way you want to do your, your, your path isn't quite uh, connecting the way you expected it to. Um, that it, it's going to take some time. And, and it's a very lucky few that can jump from, you know, their first internship to their dreams. Uh, 
that just doesn't really happen very often. Um, in the film industry, there's no clear ladder to kind of get to where you're going either. Um, it's sort of, you just kind of have to make it happen yourself. Um, so it's just, you have to be persistent um, and, and you have to keep uh, owning your craft and, 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 uh, and surround yourself with people that will support you um, and, and find a network of people that will that will nurture what you're doing and that will help you get to where you need to be and you can help them as well. I think that that's, that's kind of the most important thing is to just have be persistent and, and surround yourself with a positive community. That is an awesome lesson to learn. Thank you so much for sharing that, and I hope you kiddos yeah. learned a lot from that. Now, before I show you what I was working on over here, I always give everyone a little area at the end. If there is something that you've been working on or any website, anything that you want kids to check out, go for it. The world's your oyster. You got the floor. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I knew this was coming, and I, I, I had you know the last half an hour to think about this, and I cannot. <laughs> hey, um, sometimes we know it's cool. Um, so I, I, I'm I'm working on a couple of different Star Wars projects right now. Some some uh, live action Star Wars projects that are going to be on on D Plus, uh, the Disney streaming network. Um, uh, working on uh, Boba Fett. Working on Andor. Um, uh, I have other projects down the road, but like I, I, I'd say, uh, stay tuned to D Plus for some really cool um, uh, Star Wars and, and Marvel content. That is a fantastic answer. I know I'm definitely looking forward to the stuff coming out on Disney Plus, and I'm sure my kiddos out there who love Marvel and Star Wars are as well. So thank you so much for that. And now thank comes you. my favorite part of the episode where I'm going to show you what I was working on over here. I will warn you in advance, however, the lights in my studio love messing with the colors on the screen. So I will try getting an actual copy over to you, but I'm going to okay. try my best to get this up in here without any issues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. You Yay. shaved 20 pounds off me. Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's really cool. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing those wonderful answers. That was fantastic. And thank you again to all my kiddos and viewers who tuned in. Again, I am your host and in-house artist Aaron Leffler. Catch you next time on the drawing board. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>